Does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I ask to address the House for one minute for the purpose of inquiring about next week's schedule. Without objection. I thank the Speaker and I yield to the gentleman from Maryland, the Majority Leader, for the purpose of announcing next week's schedule. I thank the gentleman for yielding on Monday. The House will meet at 12.30 p.m. for morning hour debate and uh, 2 p.m. for legislative business with votes postponed until 6.30 p.m. On Tuesday, the House will meet at 10.30 a.m. for morning hour debate and 12 o'clock for legislative business. On Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the House will meet at uh, 10 a.m. for legislative business. On Friday, no votes are expected in the House. We will consider several bills under suspension of the rules. The complete list of suspension of bills, suspension bills will be announced by the close of business tomorrow. In addition, we will consider H.R. 3246, the Advanced Vehicle Technology Act of 2009, and H.R. 3221, the Student Aid and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2009. Yield back. Mr. Speaker, the House is not in order. Gentlemen's correct. The House is not in order. The House will come to order. Gentlemen, proceed. Since this is the first colloquy of the fall, I'd like to give the members and the public a sense of what the House will be considering over the next couple of months. Um, does the gentleman what do you expect to be voting on during the months of September and October? And I yield to the gentleman. I thank the, I, will the gentleman yield? I yield. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, first of all, of course, as you know, the House has passed. The Speaker? The House is not in order. Members will please take their conversations off the floor. Mr. Speaker, uh, as you know, we passed all 12 of our appropriation bills. So we're ready to go to conference on all 12 of those bills. The Senate has passed four of their bills and is working on the balance. Uh, we hope to conference uh, and have on the floor uh, a number of those bills before the end of September, before the beginning of the uh, fiscal year. There obviously will be, uh, given the Senate's uh, schedule, uh, a requirement for a continuing resolution for some period of time, uh, perhaps in a 30-day period time frame. So we'll be considering those uh, bills, those conference reports. In addition, as you heard, the student loan reform bill will be on the floor uh, next week, we believe. Defense authorization uh, is in conference. Uh, we expect that conference report. Health care reform, obviously, uh, we expect to do that this fall. Uh, regulation, uh, regulatory reform uh, is expected to be an item on our agenda in the House uh, this fall. Additionally, uh, we'll be waiting on the Senate uh, on a number of items that we've sent to them, including climate change and food safety, which, as you know, the House passed. Uh, so those will be some of the items. That's not an exhaustive list, but uh, is, a, uh, I think, a, a good list of what we expect to be considering uh, during the coming weeks. Reclaim my time. I thank the gentleman. Does the gentleman expect the House to be in session beyond the targeted German date of October 30th? And I yield. Uh, I think the honest answer to that is yes. Uh, obviously, that was a target date, not knowing exactly how quickly we would proceed. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, health care, uh, among other issues, uh, is taking, as, as we understand it, uh, it needed to, a, a longer time. Uh, and so consideration of that and the appropriation bills and other authorization bills that are going between the two houses uh, will, I think, clearly take us beyond uh, October 30th. Does the gentleman see the House taking any days or weeks off that are currently scheduled between now and the 30th of October? Uh, l let me say that uh, uh, I believe that every week scheduled in October we will be meeting. However, in November, as the gentleman probably knows, uh, Veterans Day falls exactly in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. Uh, we are now talking about what that means in terms of schedule because obviously uh, all the members want to be home with their various organizations, municipalities and counties, communities, uh, to uh, honor our veterans on that day and honor the service of those who have kept this country free. Uh, as a result, we're trying to uh, figure out whether or not it makes uh, any sense to either schedule a Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Friday uh, and have members come back and forth uh, for that. 
but we have not made that decision. But it is, in terms of the weeks uh, that we're looking at over the next uh, uh, 10 weeks, uh, that is a week that uh, may not be uh, uh, one in which we'll meet. We will try to make that determination uh, very soon, within the next couple of weeks, part of which will be dictated by the schedule, what's moving, how much time we need available. In addition to that, uh, uh, we will not be meeting uh, uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, I say that uh, pretty definitively. Obviously, if we could finish the Monday or Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, finish in terms of adjournment, uh, sign a die uh, for this session, and then I think that would that might uh, change that. Uh, but other than that, uh, my expectation is we would not be meeting Thanksgiving week if we needed to meet uh, uh, longer than uh, Thanksgiving week. Well, I thank the gentleman. Currently, you have scheduled out between now and October 30th. Do you see any of those Mondays or Fridays that maybe we would not be in session, having done our work during the week, knowing that the debates going on still within health care and others, that people could be back in their districts? And I yeah, yield. I thank the gentleman for yielding. My expectation is that uh, uh, th that is quite possible that we would take off either a Monday that's now scheduled, or two, or three, uh, or a Friday. Uh, one or the other, uh, given the flow of work. We did a lot of work, worked very hard, we passed a lot of legislation, but obviously to, to complete that we needed to come back from the Senate, need to complete conference reports. So to some degree uh, the, the flow of work will dictate that schedule. Uh, but on the other hand, we want to give all the members on both sides uh, appropriate notice so they can utilize the time at home to be discussing with their constituents pending legislation, in particular the health care bill. So would the gentleman be able to tell early for at least September, knowing the Mondays and Fridays, that uh, we may be able to be working at home? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I just wonder if the gentleman, knowing the schedule of all the Mondays and Fridays now, if you've already made that decision, which Mondays and which Fridays? We have not made that. that what I indicated, uh, that I hope to be working on that, and I hope next week to have at least made a preliminary decision on some of the Mondays and or Fridays. Uh, it may not be all of the ones that we'll be able to uh, uh, have members have an opportunity to work at home. Um, and again, it's a little difficult to do that because it's a little difficult to predict the, the workflow schedule. Well, I appreciate the gentleman's answer. But, but as I, I want to reiterate, we do expect next week to at least pick uh, a, a number in the relatively near term, that means September, uh, so that members will have prior notice. Well, I thank the gentleman. Knowing that we heard the President last night and we're all coming off from uh, an August recess where we watched America wake up and really pay attention to what's going on in here in Congress and voice their opinion when it comes to health care. And um, having watched that and having my own town hall meetings um, watching others' members' town hall meetings throughout the country and some of the questions raised. I listened to the President last night talk about ideas and a public plan and others. The gentleman yourself had talked during your town halls and uh, some leadership says a public plan has to be in the plan or a bill will not go through. I know the gentleman from Maryland said it doesn't have to be exactly a public plan in there. Uh, does the Democratic leadership position include a government option or exactly a public plan or a trigger, and I yield to the gentleman. As you, you heard the President's uh, uh, comments last night, uh, I agree strongly with the President and with the Speaker, and I think, that, frankly, there's no difference uh, in the three of us. We all believe that a public option is an important option, A, to save money, B, to give uh, uh, consumers options that they might not otherwise have, uh, and uh, bring, bring prices down for consumers as well as for government. Uh, so that uh, there's no difference there on the, on the importance of the public option. I'm for a public option, as you probably heard me. I don't know whether you watched my town meeting, but I, that question was asked, and I responded, I'm for the public option. What I have said is, uh, essentially what the President said yesterday, last night, was there is much uh, in this bill that I think advantages consumers, uh, businesses, uh, individuals, and families. Uh, and. Uh, I, I think the public option is important, but there are other things in the bill which are important. But I expect to bring the bill, uh, I, that we're going to bring a bill to the floor 
Uh, I'm certainly hopeful that has a public option in it. We think that's the best alternative. The President's indicated he thinks that's uh, the best alternative. He did, however, say, and I share his view, if there are other ways that people think we can do it, uh, provide that uh, competitive uh, uh, model to bring prices down and to make sure consumers get the best product available. Uh, if there are other ways to do that, uh, then uh, we're certainly open to hearing them. Does the gentleman believe that health care will come to the floor in the House before in the Senate? Uh, I think health care will come to the floor in the House when it's ready to come. And what I mean by that is when we have a consensus on exactly how the bill ought to be fashioned. Uh, we believe on this side that uh, the committees are some 85 percent in agreement. As you know, the Energy and Commerce Committee, the Education and Labor Committee, Ways and Means Committee. Uh, as you also know, there are uh, differences uh, uh, between those bills, we're working on that at this point in time um, to see what, uh, uh, how we can make those compatible. Uh, the President's uh, comments last night will obviously also be taken into consideration. And uh, so we, we will bring to the bill, bring the, to the floor uh, a bill that uh, uh, we believe reflects uh, the President's view, our view, and hopefully uh, we would hope the views, uh, uh, in, in part at least, of uh, uh, some of the members on your side of the aisle. Well, I thank the gentleman for reclaiming my time. I know you refer to the bill, and it's sometimes another bill, and you have this bill, H.R. 3200, done by one side of the aisle, passed three committees. I know last time when uh, President Clinton was in and they took up health care and they produced the bill in ways and means, it took seven weeks of debate, and I know this one was 48 hours and others were in a short time period. Um, when you refer to that bill, are you referring to 3200? Coming before, um, coming before this body, this House? I uh, yield to the gentleman. I, th I thank the gentleman. First of all, let me say that uh, I don't know where he gets two weeks. Uh, the Ways and Means Committee, I know, was in discussion. Uh, you may be formal hearings on the, on the bill, uh, but uh, we've had 80 hearings in the committees over the last 24 months uh, on health care reform. Uh, so. Uh, it was an extensive part of the debate of every candidate for president over uh, the course of 2008 and, frankly, prior to 2008. Uh, this bill has been, ex and many of its facets have been considered extensively, many parts of which were in plans presented by uh, presidential candidates on both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republican. Uh, and clearly, the president of the United States talked extensively about his ideas and where he wanted to go on health reform, and uh, much of what he said and proposed uh, was included uh, in the bills that have been, uh, have been acted upon, and uh, I think reflect his views as well as uh, the views of many people, not only in this body, but throughout the country. So from that standpoint, uh, we believe this has gotten very extensive uh, consideration. Uh, I think it's unprecedented. Uh, we had over a thousand town meetings on our side. I'm not sure. I know you had a number of town meetings on your side. I'm not sure of the number, but uh, uh, literally, I think uh, uh, thousands and thousands of Americans had an opportunity to participate and are continuing to participate in discussion of the specifics of this bill. So we think it's gotten very widespread and uh, very uh, uh, thorough consideration. Given that consideration, there are still uh, differences that we're working on. Reclaiming my time, um, just referring back to what, what I said was when the Clinton administration did health care, on ways and means they debated for seven weeks when uh, taking the bill up itself. When we did it this time, it was 48 hours of presenting the bill, the amendments being voted out of committee, um, knowing the call for the American public about transparency. And we all heard that during the month of August. Would the gentleman um, allow before any bill comes to the floor, and I guess the bill will be 3,200 from what I'm hearing the gentleman say. I know it's committee. Will the gentleman you get yield, to that final will, will version? Will the gentleman yield on that issue? Will the gentleman yield because I want to clarify that? Oh, yes. Uh, 3,200 uh, was a base bill uh, that was put together uh, by the committee uh, chairs, the committee staff, uh, with input from others uh, as a mark. Uh, m my expectation is that there will be a uh, a compendium that will be put together and will probably have a new number on it. 
that may, uh, so I don't think 3,200, which was a base mark, but you understand this was a bill, in, as you well know, in three committees, uh, so there may well be a bill fashioned from the product of the three committees. Reclaiming my time, so it would be a different number, but in essence the same bill. Would the gentleman allow, before that bill is voted on this floor, when you come to the conclusion of where that bill ends up, would we be able to have the time to go back to the American public and again all of us have town hall meetings again for the transparency of saying this is the bill that would be voted on in the House? I yield to the gentleman. Uh, I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, there has been unprecedented, I reiterate, uh, I don't think you can remember, and I've been here 29 years, and I can't remember, a bill that has been more widely vetted uh, than this bill uh, in terms of the American public. Maybe the Social Security proposal of the President uh, some years ago, uh, that was pretty widely vetted, but I don't think as widely vetted as this proposal. And so I, I say to the gentleman, uh, you go, you, you vet the bill, you discuss alternatives, uh, and you then come back after having listened to those alternatives and fashion a bill. Uh, you, you don't have new committee hearings, uh, whether it's a health care bill or any other bill. Uh, you amend it, you perfect it pursuant to hearings, and then you bring it to the floor. I don't expect we'll treat this bill uh, any differently. Well, I think, gentlemen, the only thing I would ask, knowing that the American public did have this bill vetted, but the majority of the American public disagreed with this bill, disagreed with the public option. And having the transparency here that the American public is asking, having the American public so engaged and educated on health care and being such an issue, I always thought it would be helpful not only to this body, but to the American public itself before we go and vote again, whatever comes before that bill to come to this House, that you would like the opportunity for members to go home and have a town hall and explain what's in the final version of the bill before that vote takes place. I think the American public would appreciate it and be a great opportunity for both sides. Well, uh, if the gentleman yield. I want to say clearly, as you know, the bill, uh, that the base bill, the uh, mark bill from which the three committees worked, as you know, uh, was put online uh, before the August break uh, so that uh, it's been uh, online for a very long period of time. Now, there will be changes. Uh, there will be amendments. Uh, there have already been amendments in the three committees, and those have been online. Uh, so I think... Uh, uh, the gentleman's concern is, is correct. We share it. We want to make sure the public uh, has the opportunity to know what uh, is being done, uh, that uh, we transparently have the specifics uh, for the American public uh, to know what we're doing and for the members uh, to have that knowledge, and we intend to do that. Now, whether or not uh, uh, we're going to have a time frame in which somebody can have a, uh, a town hall meeting, which may take a month to notice and uh, get together, uh, I, I think you would be shocked if I responded to you that, oh, sure, we'll just wait around until you have your town meetings. Uh, so I'm not going to say that. Uh, but I do appreciate the gentleman's point, which is we want to make sure the public does, in fact, have notice. Well, I thank the gentleman, and I appreciate his answers today. The one thing I would say, I did this town hall in Bakersfield, California, where I did no notice. Uh, I didn't do a mailer. And... Um, get enough opportunity where we have an opportunity now to know that we'll be in past October. I had 3,000 people. That's 1 percent of the whole city's population turn out. And uh, very engaged, very knowledgeable of the bill itself. So I just hope the opportunity comes that knowing maybe there's a different number on this bill, but it is still 3,200 that uh, the public would be able to see. And I, I will tell the gentleman that the Republicans on this side have a lot of ideas about health care, a lot of bills out there of ways that we can lower the cost, take care of pre-existing conditions, and actually make health care much better for all of Americans, and I appreciate the time and yield back.